it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden and today is another seedling update and maintenance video. So I have been trying to do a lot of seedling update and maintenance videos throughout this seedling season for me at the beginning of the year. We talked a lot about how we see a whole lot of um, YouTube gardeners start their seeds and then we see them plant them out in their garden, but we don't see a lot of in between. So I've really been trying to show that progress as I'm traveling that journey with my seedlings. So I've already done several videos of seedling maintenance. I'm just going to keep it going as long as I currently have seedlings going. Now we're kind of getting to the time where we're doing a whole lot of potting up, potting up, potting up. And a lot of people are like, what is potting up? So potting up is basically just upping the size of the container. Most of my seedlings I'm starting in, you know, these little 12 inch cell uh, or 12 cell seed cell containers. So it's like where the actual seedling is, is only a few inches. And over time, the seedling can't keep thriving in that kind of situation. So I pop them up to different sizes, sometimes the quart, sometimes these little four inch, sometimes larger in the gallon size. So a lot of people are like, I, why would I pot up? Like what, what's the purpose of that? It seems really tedious. Well, it is tedious. <laughs> I'm, I'm there for you on that. The reason we do that is sometimes timing's not right. Sometimes we've started our seedlings earlier and the timing is not right to plant them directly out into the garden. And so what we do is we wanna pot up. And when we pot up, we give those roots more room to grow. If roots don't have plenty of room to grow, they quite frequently can become root bound. So the roots will grow in a circle and become really, really tight with one another. The roots will quickly utilize all the nutrients that's available. Um, you might see your seedlings stop or slow growth along the way. Um, I also prefer potting up because I think it makes a huge difference in the health of the plant when I can't get it directly into um, the garden. I also really enjoy going to the nursery and buying these full beautiful plants. And then when I'm growing seedlings at home, I'm kind of like, oh, they're so small and beauty. So I really like potting up because it makes me feel like I have this big, beautiful plant. Now, in hindsight, I know that if I just put that little seedling in the garden, that it's going to produce a big, beautiful plant. Like I know that's going to happen, but there's something about seeing it in a nursery container and then being able to take it out and plant it in the garden that really satisfies part of my gardening needs. So a lot of times it's really people ask, how do I know when it's time to pot up? Well, if your seedlings growth slows or stops and you haven't seen it continue on, it might be time to pot up. Um, if the roots are growing outside your seed cell, definitely a time to um, begin potting up. And then another good time is if in this little tw um, 12 seedling container, if the plants are really like jam packed in there, there's not a lot of airflow. Let me see if I can find one like that real quick. Okay, like this one with this um, coleus, this is Kalacha Sunset. These are starting to get so jam packed in the middle that they're, the outside seedlings are like leaning over because the seedlings in the middle are forcing their way up. So these are actually getting bent over. So that's a really good time to know that it's time to pot up well when the seedlings are overcrowded in their container. And as you know, if you don't have good airflow and circulation, it leads to disease, it leads to pests, it causes all kinds of problems. So you wanna make sure that you give your coleus the appropriate amount of circulation and space to be able to thrive and grow. Now, potting up for me um, is super simple. I typically choose a container that is at least two times as large. So if we were to pull out one of these seedlings, let's see if I can gently pull this guy out. Nope, he doesn't want to come out. It's just so I can see, show you the size of this. Okay, so I've got this little seedling, this little colia seedling. So I want to go at least two times the size. So this would be appropriate right here. I reuse a lot of my nursery pots, um, which makes me feel happy because they don't go to the landfill. So this would be great. I could totally do this. I could even go all the way up to a quart size if I wanted, if I was going to grow them on longer. I'm only going to grow mine on about a month before I start getting them out into the garden. So I think that this size is appropriate. I also do a mix of potting soil and compost and i typically do that just to go ahead and create some really good um, nutrient 
um, soil for these roots to grow through. And then after I have got them potted up, I really start hitting these plants with a fertilizer, liquid fertilizer. I use the Alaskan Fish Emulsion, which works wonderful. So we actually have quite a few that we're going to pot up today. Um, I think we're going to pot up coleus, candy tuft, bell peppers, eggplants, and eucalyptus. That is a lot. We're potting up a lot. Everything is growing like crazy. And I have also found that once I pot them up to the next level, they go bonkers. They, as soon as they have a little bit more space, they spread out and the plant gets huge very, very quickly. Let me show you my um, Cleome seedlings that I just did not long ago. I just potted them up. Okay, these were outside, but my Cleome seedlings, I potted these up less than two weeks ago. And I mean, they were small. And as soon as I got them in this container with the mix of the soil and the compost, and then I hit them with that Alaskan fish emulsion fertilizer, they've gone bonkers. They are so happy. And I'm very happy with the direction they're going, but they have probably tripled in size since I potted them up. So that's one of the other really big benefits. As soon as you give your seedlings a bit, little bit more room, they're gonna go crazy. Okay, now is potting up required? Nah, not necessarily. A lot of people just go from, you know, what I've done right here with the seedling and go directly into the garden. That's all about timing um, for, for me. And I'm not always super great at the timing. I'm still in an area like right now, we still have three more weeks until our projected last frost. And even though I don't see any of that in the um, forecast, I'm still being cautious. And these are ready to go out now. So do I take the risk of just going ahead and planting them out in the garden? And then maybe I'd have to cover them up um, if we had a freeze or if we had a really big, like a blue northerner, you know, then I could lose all of that, those seedlings that I had um, worked towards. So it's really like, do I want to take the risk of putting them outside or do I want to take the time to go ahead and pot them up and then put them out at a time that I deem appropriate for myself and my garden? I choose the potting up, but totally understandable if you choose not to pot up. A lot of people find it very, very tedious and they do not enjoy it. So I'm all for that. You guys know that when we talk about gardening and I talk about what I'm doing, I'm talking about just what works well for me. You should absolutely feel that you can adjust and make things that do things that work well for you. I know a lot of people think that like gardening roads are hard and fast. Eh, I think there's a lot of flexibility depending on what kind of gardener you are and where you garden. Okay, and since I've got the coleus out, let's go ahead and start with that. We're gonna need quite a bit of soil today. So let me find my burger BM7. I use Burger BM7 as my favorite potting soil. I get it at Farmers. Uh, I get it at Homegrown Plants in Farmersville. Yes, the price has gone up by $8 a bag, which is insanity. But the bags are huge. They're three cubic square feet. And even at, you know, I guess it's like $24 a bag. So worth it. I love the soil. I think it's really, really great. I enjoy it. And so as long as it's fitting my needs and I can still manage to force it into my budget, then I'll do that. And then the compost I'm using is called Vita Earth. I also get it from um, Homegrown in Farmersville. And so I'm just gonna put a few big handfuls in here. I'm not going crazy. I would say the compost is gonna be like one part compost to like four parts soil. And I don't think that the compost is necessary. I think you can just do your potting soil and then add your, um, you know, liquid fertilizer at a later point. Or if you're someone who wants to go ahead and add slow release fertilizer, you can. I don't like to add slow release fertilizer when I'm potting up because I prefer to add the slow release pot, um, the slow release fertilizer directly into the ground or pot or wherever it is that I and planting this plant for its final move. Um, since the slow release fertilizer is, you know, typically three to six months of fertilization. So I've got this all mixed up really well. And with these coleus, I am gonna be utilizing these smaller plant, um, smaller containers that I've saved from the nursery. So let me go ahead and get those all filled up. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna go ahead and fill these up about halfway maybe a little more than halfway because it's pretty easy to pot up uh, these little um, seedlings these little bitty ones and then what I'll do is as I'm potting them 
I'll go ahead and put them into the tray just like that. So these trays hold 20 plants each. So let's go ahead and knock that out. Okay, so you tell we're doing a lot of potting up. I filled up one, two, three, four, five at 20 each, so 100 um, containers for today, and I might need more, I'm not quite sure. So basically, the next part of the process is going to be taking the seedlings out and putting them in the containers. Very simple process. You guys already saw me pull one of them out. All I'm gonna do is just dig down with my fingers tuck this guy in add a little bit of soil if necessary and then call it a day very simple not trying to like crush the soil in it um i definitely still want to be like soft and light with it but i definitely want it to be firm enough that um the seedling is supported you can definitely tell that these roots were starting to um, become root bound so they're starting to grow in a circle around each other so it's definitely time to go ahead and pot these up. Now, when you're potting up your seedlings, you do wanna make sure that they're well watered. Um, when you're potting them up, you don't wanna be potting them up when they're really dry. Yeah, look at how rebound these were becoming. You wanna make sure they're well watered before you um, pot them up, give them, like if they're looking kinda of dry, Go ahead and water them and then and then um, go ahead and pot them up the next day. Give them the time to soak up that water. So all we're gonna do, and these are gonna fill in really quickly. Coleus grows fast. Now this particular variety, this sun, uh, Kalacha Sunset, is actually a kind of a, a more of a shorter dwarf variety. I'm really excited about its color. I believe I got these seeds from Baker Creek. But see like this little bitty seedling was on the corner and it was getting pushed over. You can see by the um, seedlings in the center. So it definitely needed its opportunity to have a little bit more space. And then I always just dump all the remaining like soil from my seed starting in with my mix because I use the same, um, the same stuff. Now, I think this last one had multiple, yeah, it had multiple in it. Let me see if I can tease this apart. Yeah, we'll get that divided into two. There we go, looking good. Now I have a whole bunch more <laughs> Colia seedlings to plant up. <clears throat> I actually think that 100 that I just did is gonna be just enough for Colias. So that'll be fun. I got super excited because I was like, oh, I'm done and I only had three trays. Never got about this one. <laughs> okay, let's go in, get going on this one now. Okay, I did want to show you that I am going to come in here and top all my coleus to create a bushier plant. So you can see right here got a lot of growth down low so it looks insane but I'm going to cut all that off at this point and this will allow these plants to become bushier but also remain in these containers a little bit longer so I'm just going to go ahead and top them and this might sound really look really counterproductive but it's actually really good for them and this will help them grow longer out in the garden. I'm just making sure I'm cutting above a couple of sets of leaves. I know it looks harsh. I'm 
Okay, there. I cut all that beautifulness off, but don't worry, it's going to be good. <laughs> I'm going to do that with all of them. Now, I did want to point out that you can take all these cuttings and you can go ahead and propagate them directly into soil again and have even double the amount of plants. I obviously have plenty. <laughs> I don't need any more, so I'm not going to repropagate this. Okay, I have a few more seedlings left over. And look at those roots coming out the bottom. And instead of potting them up in a smaller container, I'm going to pot them up like a nursery would, where they would probably put three little plugs in one container. And then I'll get a nice full plant. This will be fun to plant in a Maybe a container or a pot or something like that would be really fun. I might put four in each of these. Okay, let me take you outside and show you where these all are. Okay, I've got some more seedlings out here, but I want to show you over here. I've tucked in all of the coleus seedlings there under there. They're here and here, and we're going to begin the hardening off process. And I did go ahead and water them all in, but aren't they beautiful? Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, the next thing I'm going to start is Candy Tuft. I started them from seed. I did an experiment of where on one of them I did surface sow, and on one of them I sewed them a half an inch deep. I don't really think it ended up making any kind of difference. These have gotten a little leggy. Definitely think I need to get them moved out to the greenhouse so they'll do a little bit better. And I do think I'm going to try pinching them as well. Where I'm just going to take the top center growth out and try to get it to branch out a little bit because these have gotten a little bit leggy. Now, some people say that you can plant seedlings a little bit deeper if they're leggy. It really depends on the seedling. I have not grown candy tough before so I am not going to plant them deep deeper than just the regular surface because like I said I don't know enough about them um, to know if that's you know will work or not um, I guess what we can do is we can plant a few of them but candy tuft are um, kind of like a tender perennial in my area they tend to last about two to three years and they tend to bloom and these are actually trying to bloom already they bloom um, in late winter early spring so I don't know if I'm gonna get many blooms from these plants this year but growing them as a perennial I think will be really exciting and I'll be able to tuck them into some different parts of my garden where typically I don't have a lot of flowers in late winter early uh, early spring so it'll be really nice to have instead of buying these plants because they can be a little pricey And I'm just working these into the same soil and compost mixture that I did for all of the coleus seasons, seedlings. Even though these look flimsy, I will say their, their uh, stems are very strong. They feel like, they don't feel like super fragile or anything. I think it probably would have been better to start these candy tuft earlier. I think that these might have been something that would have been really good to have started in maybe like October, November, or October, September, October inside, and then had these really great plants, perennial plants to plant out at the end of fall, beginning of winter, and then I would have had spring blooms. Okay, and then like most pruning, I'm really just going to take off above um, a couple of sets of leaves. I do want to try to make sure that I leave at least two, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Two sets of true leaves. So not the first seedling leaves, and we've kind of talked about that a little bit before, not the first seedling leaves, but it's the next leaves after that. And I'm guessing that most probably you could probably take these and try to propagate them as well. But I'm not gonna do that, y'all. I'm running out of room. <laughs> Okay, I've got five more over here, so I think I'm going to go ahead and plant up some of the baby blue eucalyptus that did really well. I had maybe 80% germination with these, and these roots are starting to grow out the bottom, so definitely time to get these moved. 
I'm really excited. This is the first year I've grown eucalyptus from seed. I'm really excited to have it as a foliage for my floral arranging. Now these um, eucalyptus do benefit from pinching, but I think they're a little too short right now. I'd rather them be about three or four inches tall before I begin pinching them. Okay, I've got a bunch of leftover space on this. I'm not going to stress about it. The other things I wanted to pot up today were my lilac bell pepper and my Listata de Gandia eggplant, but I want to plant these up in quart containers because I want to let them grow on and have a little bit more space than what we have right here. And I can always add more seedlings to those later. I have a bunch of dianthus left right now. I have toothache plant. I have creeping thyme. I guess I could plant up the toothache plant. Let's do that. Because the toothache plant, it's already got its roots coming out the bottom. It's looking really, really good. I know a lot of y'all are very interested to see how it goes with the toothache Tooth uh, eggplant, I'm very excited to see how it goes with it this year too. And I had 100% germination with the tooth eggplant. It's got really great root structure. I think it's gonna be really fun to grow. Lots of potting up today, as you can tell. It's just that time where a lot of these seedlings I started at the beginning of the year, they're just, they're ready to go. And they need more space to keep going. And this also makes room for me to start some more rounds of seeds. I'm about to start um, some nasturtiums. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start some zinnia seeds. Um, got a wide variety that I wanna get going that I haven't yet, but. And there's some of them where I've got double seedlings. So I'm just gonna gently pull apart the seedlings and you can easily separate seedlings as long as they haven't like grown on too far where their roots are tangled. Now, if you have more than one seedling and you want to prune some of them off, you can totally do that too. You can just cut them out, but you can see I'm just very gently going in here and dividing this guy. Now, a lot of people don't like to prick out or cut out seedlings but you have to remember that you're doing them a good deed by only having one in each container because they will um, try to compete with one another for nutrients and soil and you don't want them to compete even you want a nice healthy seedling that doesn't have to compete against anybody else um, especially in the beginning okay good it makes me feel better fill out this um, container of plants Okay, so I've got all my quart containers in here. We'll go ahead and start with the Lestata eggplant, which is looking friggin' amazing. And its roots are coming out the bottom. It is definitely ready to be moved out of these containers. Let's see how easy, yeah, these seedlings are gonna be pretty easy to get out. Now, if you're trying to save space, you can try to put two um, seedlings for now in each container. And then when you're potting them up, or when you're actually planting them in your garden, you can separate them out. Mine are all going to different homes. So some of them are staying with me. Some of them are going to Kristen's. Some are going to my friend Richard and Crystal's house. Some are going to my daughter's, uh, my do the, her third grade teacher, even though she's in uh, ninth grade now. <laughs> but her third grade teacher is a big gardener. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them all in separate little containers so that it is easier to pass these on to the next people. I'm actually thinking I'm only gonna keep like maybe two or three of these. But this has been so fun. These have been fun seedlings to grow. I'm really excited to see how they turn out and how um, my, it's my, if my family enjoys eggplant. Okay, so we've got the eggplant going. So next I'm gonna shift over to the lilac bell pepper, which is doing beautifully. Um, I'm really loving some of the coloring on the leaves. I don't think I have to pot these up today, but um, I'm just gonna go ahead. I think they could grow a little bit longer in here. I did wanna say when I'm pulling my seedlings from this container, you don't actually wanna pull, pull. So I'm actually loosening them, just giving some squeeze from multiple sides and allowing it to come out itself. I'm not actually pulling really hard on the stems. You don't wanna do that because you can break roots and stuff. But then also with these that I love, it has this little spatula too to use. I th find the spatula works well when it has a um, less robust root system. 
And these last few, I'm going to put two. So I'm going to put one in each corner just because I don't want to start another tray. But these are also getting split up between all those people I listed earlier. All right, there we go. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> okay, what I want to do right now is take you outside into the greenhouse area and show you what's going on with the seedlings that are in the greenhouse and the seedlings that are on the back porch. Specifically, we're going to pay a little bit of attention to dahlias and we're also going to look at petunias. I think it's about time for my dahlias to start being pinched back. I don't know. Sometimes I don't like to do that. Sometimes I just want to let them go. Maybe I'll just let them go and just have that first like beautiful bloom, especially since it's so hot so soon. Okay, so we're not going to pinch my dahlias. So the big struggle with dahlias in my area is it gets so hot that they stop growing. And when you start them in, you know, late winter, early spring, they don't have enough time before the really hot weather hits to actually produce flowers or very many flowers. So then all they do all summer is just try to survive. They don't really bloom. And then come fall, they might put on a flush of flowers. The, um, the color spectacle dahlias that I love, they only give me a flush of flowers in the fall. Um, they do not grow fast enough to give me a flush before we hit our hot weather. So if I were to go back and pinch back all my dahlia seedlings, the ones I grew from seed, it would basically set them back two to three weeks um, regarding blooms. And I don't know if I have two to three weeks. We're hitting 90, degree, 90 degrees tomorrow. Um, now we're going to go 90 degrees one day and then later this week it's going to be 37. Yeah, so it's like, you know, almost a 60 degree drop. So I think that if I were to pinch my seedlings back, I would set them back so far that I most likely, I would be less likely to get a flush of blooms this spring before the hot summer hits. So I'm not going to pinch them back. So I just want to tell y'all, for those of y'all who are growing in my particular zone, in my area, who struggled with dahlias, that's going to be my philosophy for this year. I'm going to go ahead and let them put off that first strong bloom. And then hopefully that will give them the opportunity to um, be able to produce at least some flowers before the hot weather. And then they'll be ready to go in the fall producing another round of flowers. But let's go outside and look at everything, all the seedlings and what's going on with them. Okay, real quick, I did want to show you bleeding hearts coming up and we've got a still bee coming up right there. So everybody is looking good in here. This is the begonias, the caladiums, a still bee and bleeding heart. Over here, the concolius is stunning. I mean, it's ridiculous, y'all. With every penny for those expensive seeds. And love these. And now that I have these, hopefully I can just take cuttings from them and propagate them over and over again, which will be great. And here's all the seedlings that we just did. I'm gonna get them watered outside. Over here, tons of dianthus that I need to basically start getting into the ground. These are not gonna be potted up, they're gonna go directly outside. I've got a couple of begonias back there, so a couple more begonias to pot up. I've got creeping thyme, which is starting to actually flower and bloom. Down here are all of my snapdragons, which everybody's up. We had really, really good germination rates on those, so they're all looking really nice. And um, I'm about to start their first round of fertilizer, so once I do that, these will definitely take off as well. Okay, a couple more things over here. Let's talk about fails. Still waiting on that hardy ger um, geranium, y'all. Got nothing but algae growing here. <laughs> but y'all told me to wait. Sometimes it takes, I mean, 45 days on these. The Didicus blue lace, we got nothing. Well, wait, I take it back. What is, what is that? Oh, we got one. Yes. Finally. That guy just came up, y'all. One out of 12 so far. Oh, there's another one. Oh. <gasps> Yay. Okay, good. I'm going to keep this on. So finally, this guy took a long time. And then over here, I just planted these up. This is a new round of Bells of Ireland and Verbascum, which were hanging out in the refrigerator for quite a while for, um, for cold stratification. Now up here, the Constelludo Genovese, I actually just stopped working on them. I pulled the lids off because I'm getting rid of them. I got no germination once again on the second round. So I had zero germination on that particular variety of tomatoes. 
so let's step outside here. So I've got begonias going on here. Um, they're all doing really nicely. And then these are all my Cleome, which are doing good. And I've been hardening off my tomato seedlings, which are doing really nice over here. Tomato seedlings are about ready to be potted up or actually put in their actual containers. I haven't decided which I'm gonna do yet. And then of course over here is where we put all of the gorgeous coleus all been watered in really well. I'm pretty much watering my seedlings every other day. So here we are in the greenhouse. We've got all the pepper plants out here and I will say I come out here and it's filled with pollinators in the greenhouse because I leave the door open in the greenhouse. So all of the pepper plants are out here, the ones that I overwinter doing really good. Got a couple of iris rhizomes that I need to get planted. Down here is all the bare root that I just started. We've got our sea holly or echinacea. Um, which are looking nice. Down here is all of the calla lilies that I started and you can already see some of them sprouting up. They're doing nicely. Now over here I have a mix of seedlings. So I've got uh, scabiosas. They're doing okay but I have always found that these are a little bit slow growers. Tons of petunias. We got to start planting petunias. <laughs> I got to start planting containers of petunias soon ton more uh, petunias over here. Look at this guy. So pretty. Those are looking good. More petunias. Look how tall they're getting. Very happy. Another thing of petunias looking really good. We've got one other pepper plant here and then all my clematis. This is the jackmani, which is doing beautifully. The bell de woking and the earnest markham, which is just now putting out a little something right there. So they're all doing good. These are my dahlias. They're doing really nice. And you can tell that, you know, I could pinch them at this point if I wanted to. I mean, some of these are a foot tall. They're just leaning. But what I think I'm going to do is I had a couple of containers over here that did not do well with snapdragons. So I think that I'm going to go ahead and plant some, tuck in some dahlias in a few places on these containers. I think that'll be really nice. Look how beautifully this is. Alyssa and Pestle Bell. Absolutely gorgeous. Everything's looking nice over here. Not a lot of um, movement. We have a little bit of movement. There's a, um, a daffodil trying to come up there. The, some of these pots aren't doing so great. So anyway, I haven't had a lot of movement on these um, all these daffodils that I planted. There are some. But hopefully soon we'll get them. I planted them so late. So I guess they're just delayed. I'm not sure. We'll see what ends up happening with them. But over here, I've got a few holes where I could do a dahlia there. I could do a dahlia there. I think it would work out real nicely. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this seedling update and maintenance video. Just going through and looking at everything that's going on. So basically a lot of today is potting up. Um, and the reasonings behind spotting up some of these and a lot of pinching and then continuing to harden off seed seedlings where I'm bringing them in and out and getting them adjusted to the outdoor conditions. So they're doing really well. I am ready to start some more seedlings. So I think, like I said, I was thinking nasturtium, zinnias, I'm not sure what else, but I'm going to get some other things going, um, which will be good. I think Jeff and I were just talking. It's such a nice day. I think we might film a garden, garden tour today just to show you what's going on in the month of February. There's not a lot of stuff to look at, but there are some things to look at. And y'all know me. I don't clean up before my garden tours. So you're going to see all the mess, how, how I truly, <laughs> how I truly garden. I'm a messy gardener, um, but that'll be really fun to show you all. But as always, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Every time you like and comment, it grows my channel. And truthfully, I just really enjoy reading all y'all's comments and um, chatting with y'all back and forth. And I also love when I see you all chatting with each other. I think it's just really fun. And make sure you check me out on my social media outlets, including Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. As always, she's a Mac gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.